and Hacked here at Via Rock 94, Whitesnake, David and Adrian still with me. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more about the Greatest Hits album. Um, actually, no, going back a bit, actually, I wanted to ask you, what factors um, kind of brought you to reform Whitesnake? Well, I didn't, you've kind of been in, yeah, because you've kind of been on hold for about four years, haven't yeah, you, well, with the Coverdale page? Yeah, I worked with Jimmy. Uh, the first I knew of this Greatest Hits, I was actually rehearsing with Jimmy in London last year, last summer. And I received a cassette from the very informed record company, Geffen, who said, hope you're enjoying your holiday, you know. And, uh, and a cassette called White Snake's Greatest Hits. And I thought, oh, well, they're just trying to capitalize on the, the Coverdale Page thing. Then EMI heard about it and uh, said they wanted to do it. And um, I was working with Adrian writing songs during a break from his project, Manic Eden. And I was invited to do the St. Petersburg thing, the Russian show. Uh, and Adrian said, well, who are you going to work with? I said, well, maybe, you know, get a session. I haven't got time to look for a band. Maybe a couple of session guys. And he said, at our, this time in our lives, why do we want to work with strangers or people we don't necessarily like? And it took me about five minutes to say, you're right. You know, and he said, well, I'd, I'll be in. We called Rudy. Rudy was there. Kamasi and I had a handshake agreement after covered El Page that uh, we would work together on whatever. Rudy recommended Warren. And a former crew associate recommended uh, Paul Merkovich, the keyboard player, who's far too good looking. He's oh, I'll look out for him. I'll look out for him. Why isn't he in the interview? Sat, well, actually, he's wearing a very questionable Prince Valium shirt tonight. So you may see him swanning around. Go um, away. Could you give us a little bit of an insight into um, the tracks that have come up on the uh, Greatest Hits album? Because it only um, covers the last three albums. Yeah, well, as I say, it's, a, it's in essence a Geffen album. Right. Um, I, you know, I and I spoke about uh, getting hold of the original White Snake Masters and doing White Snake the early years, and having Mike Fraser and I remix them because everybody seems to have a CD nowadays. And I don't think, uh, you know, we keep the essence, but give it a little more of a modern edge or, tech, you know, technology or whatever. But nobody could find the 24 tracks, the original. So God forbid where they are, uh, and my ex-manager with them. Oh. So that was, because uh, in essence, this should be viewed really as volume two. Right. Well, thank you for explaining that. Good. Um, Adrian, David mentioned that you've been working on some new material together. Why um, didn't any new tracks come up on, on the album? Are they going to be saved for something else? Uh, well, yeah, actually, you know, we, we are considering recording a new album. To, um, and um, for this, this album, it, it, it was already hard enough to get all the good tracks that are there, you know, to, right. to, to get a, to get a selection out of that on one album was already pretty tough and um, also um, we thought because the, um, the direction that we're working in right now is much more um, a little bit you could call it back to Whitesnake's roots right. before we got carried away a little bit into the American um, dream at the end of the 80s and um, we thought it would be a nice uh, fresh thing to, to put them all on one album instead of you know mixing them up with stuff that has been around okay. for the last 10 12 years. Well, thanks for explaining that. We'll talk a little bit more about um, new material and future plans for Whitesnake after this break, but taking us into the break, we're going to show you a little bit, a little tiny snippet of Whitesnake live on stage here at Via Rock Festival. See you after the break with more from Whitesnake.
part of Headbangers Ball. It's not quite the still of the night, but uh, we've got a few more moments to talk to White Snake before they take to the stage here at Vierock uh, in Belgium. And uh, just in the last segment there, Adrian was talking about the direction of the new material, going back to the more kind of bluesy roots kind of thing. Do you see... Um, Have you ever considered Ball Bangers Head? We have, actually. It's uh, our little nickname behind ah. the scenes, actually. Yes, we have. Um, yeah, the new material. Um, do you see this greatest hits uh, kind of thing as like closing a chapter, ready for a fresh start to see how things the, might go? I think it's just going to give people the choice to have a taste. That's about it. Have another fly for you. It's lovely. Uh, no, it's just going to be a choice for people if they want to have a check it out, you know, which will lead maybe to, the, to something else. You know, Whitesnake, if anything, uh, if we do decide to continue, will simply be uh, an alternative to alternative music. Yeah. That's about it, you know. Um, and some good rock and roll songs. That is true. You are definitely doing something very, very different to... I mean, the alternative has become mainstream, which is quite ironic, really, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, however, as I say, there's room for everyone. Uh, and uh, God willing, there's room for, uh, for the snakes. I think it, that's reflected in the lineup here, because um, you live in uh, Holland, Adrian. You might have more kind of know what's going on on the European scene, but um, yeah. the lineup today is very diverse, and there's like AOR melodic stuff, and there's like really heavy thrash stuff like Paradise yeah. Lost. Um, is that are you happy to be on that kind of bill? Because I think it does a lot to kind of broaden people's kind of horizons. Yeah. I am really happy about it, and I, I as much as much variety as I can can get. You know, it's it's inspiring, and, and it gives you. You know, I can remember a bunch of festivals in the mid-80s where everybody was basically playing exactly the same thing, you know, with different chords, with different singers, different guitar players, but right now it seems to be a lot more diverse and, and there's a lot of stuff that I like from the so-called, people call it alternative and I don't really consider it that, you know, but there's a lot of stuff that I really like to listen to and um, it gives you some different kinds of inspiration for new material, of, you know, I really enjoy it. And, and what I do like about, especially the last couple of years it seems to be back to more real stuff and instead of the Barbie doll type late 80s you know where yep. and um, it's, it's supposed to separate the, the men from the boys as David and I have been talking about you know so yep. it's good. <laughs> Is there anything around at the moment that you particularly like David that's in, in the current scene? The, uh, the idea of taking to the stage in about an hour that's yeah. about it yeah I'm taking it one step at a time by the look of those steps it'll be the safest measure uh, no, my daughter usually keeps me informed uh, what's going on. Fury in the Slaughterhouse, I've heard some nice stuff there. I'm a song person, you know, I'm not really a, a fan of bands, I like songs, you know. So uh, she introduced me to Smells Like Teen Spirit and, uh, I, you know, I enjoyed it immensely. But that's what happens with a 16-year-old precocious daughter. <laughs> So how do you see the future of Whitesnake? I know you said you're taking it day by day, but yeah. uh, you know, writing songs is very creative and I'm sure that you're going to get inspired a lot of the response yeah. you've got on this tour. How do you think, uh, how do you see the future? Well, it's evident to me, certainly working with Adrian and these guys, that uh, the passion is still there and uh, it'd be ridiculous not to, uh, to make the most of that, you know, but the whole purpose of this tour was legitimately uh, to have fun, I swear, you know. I worked for three years with Jimmy Page and it's the only disappointing side was that we only made seven shows. I was just to say getting the old loincloth back from the dry cleaners, you know, and it was over. It was concertus interruptus, you know. So uh, I'm having a blast. Good. That's you know. Know. Well, may I uh, say it's great to have you back. We're very happy to have you back playing in Europe. You've had fantastic reviews from all the gig reviews I've read and uh, you must be very, very pleased with the response. I'd like to wish you both. The whole band, in fact. Best of luck for the Thank future. You, and uh, we're wi winding up our coverage of the Via Rock Festival 94. I'm going to say goodnight uh, with a little bit of live performance from White Snake from the festival. And you'll also be able to see their remaining tour dates for the rest of Europe. So check out White Snake back in Europe. Highly recommended. Check this little snippet out live. And uh, you'll see these guys on tour. See. I'll see you guys next week. Thank you very much to both of you. Cheers.